All right then, so we have our base React app up and running, but now what I wanna do is try and fetch some data using our backend API. And I'm gonna do that from the homepage. I wanna try and fetch all of the workouts and list them in the homepage. So to do this, we'll be using the use effect hook. So let me do this right here, use effect. I'm gonna also import this at the top. So come up to the top, we wanna import use effect and also import the use state hook as well because we'll be using some state in a second and that comes from react okay so we've imported those two things and the use effect hook fires a function and it's going to fire a function when the component is rendered now we only want to fire it once when it first is rendered we don't want to go out and try and fetch it multiple times every time the component is rendered so to specify that, we do a comma, and then as a second argument to this use effect hook, we pass in an empty array. This is the dependency array, and with it being empty, it will only ever fire once when the component first renders. So what we want to do now is we want to try and fetch the, um, the workouts from the API on the back end. So what I'm gonna do is create now a constant, and it's gonna be called fetch workouts and it's gonna be equal to a function, and it's gonna be equal to an async function, like so. So all of the fetch logic is gonna live in here. Now the reason I've done this is because I want to use the async keyword, and we shouldn't make this async right here. But we can create a function inside it which is async, and then all we need to do is call that function. So I can say at the bottom, fetch workouts like so. And now we can use the await keyword inside this function. So. We'll say const and then response is equal to await. And we want to use the fetch API, so fetch. And then the URI is gonna be forward slash API, forward slash workouts. Only we also have to add in localhost as well. So let me paste that in at the front. So we have localhost port 4000, which is the backend server, forward slash API, forward slash workouts, right? So that's gonna fetch the data and store the response in this object right here now. So now what I want to do is I want to pass the JSON from this response object into something we can work with. So to do that, I can say const JSON is equal to await response and use a method on it called JSON. And that passes the JSON and now we should have an array of objects in here, workout objects. So what we want to do is check if the response is okay first of all, and we can do that using an okay property on this thing right here. So we'll say if response.okay, then do something. And we only want to do this if the response is okay, because if there's some kind of error and we don't get the data back, then we don't want to do whatever we're doing in here. And what we're gonna do is update some local states, but we need to create that state first of all. So to do that, we'll say const workouts and set workouts is equal to use state and to begin with the state is going to be null but if the response is okay then basically we want to update the workouts using set workouts and the value of it is going to be this stuff we get back the array of data so we'll say set workouts and then we want to pass in the json and the reason oops the reason it's going to be an array of workouts is because if we take a look in the back end inside the controllers the workout controller where we get all of the workouts you see here we get them all and store them in workouts and we send that back as json so this is an array of documents from the database so when it comes back in json format we pass that and it becomes again an array of objects where each object represents a workout okay so that's all we pretty much need to do inside this use effect. It's gonna fire this function when the component first renders. And then we have, after it's run, the workouts. So what we can do is cycle through those workouts now down here. So I'm gonna get rid of this h2 and then replace that with a div with a class of workouts. So we can style it later. And then down here, we want to cycle through the workouts, but we only wanna cycle through them when we have some. So we can do a little conditional check here. We say workouts, and then double ampersand and then workouts.map like so. And we fire a function then 
for each individual workout and return some templates. So normal parentheses here, not curly braces because we're returning some template. And what this does is say, look, only if we have a value for this, then we'll start to map through them. If this is null, which is to begin with, then this is never gonna be run, this code. Only when it's updated right here and it has value will we map through the workouts. Now, when we do this, we get access to each individual workouts. So we can output it now in the template. So what I'm gonna do is a paragraph tag and it needs a key in React and the key has got to be unique. So it could be the workout dot underscore ID because each workout has that underscore ID property. And then inside the paragraph tag, I just want to output the title. So the workout dot title like so. So hopefully this is all going to work now, but it's not going to work until we start up the backend server. We have the front end running right here, but the backend server isn't running. So we need to open up an additional terminal cd into the back end first of all and then we want to run npm run dev to spin up the server for the back end and yep yeah, okay that's all up and running so now hopefully this will work so if we try and preview this in a browser we'll see that if we open up the console in the developer tools we're going to get an error and this error means that basically we're trying to access the backend server from a different origin server so in our case we have our backend node server running on port 4000 and then we have our react development server running on port 3000 that serves our react application so we have two different servers one for the front end and one for the back end and we're trying to make a request from one to the other right and by default, those cross origin requests from different servers are blocked for security reasons. Now, there's a couple of ways we can get around this while we're developing the application. The first option is to install a package called CORS, which stands for cross origin resource sharing, and use that on our backend server to allow these cross origin requests. The other option, which is simpler for us while we're developing the React application, is to add a proxy field to the front end package.json file. So then open up your package.json file inside the front end folder and add a new field called proxy at the top. And then we set this equal to the development server address, which is localhost port 4000. So this is the address of the node server, right? And what this property then does is tell our React dev server to proxy any requests that it doesn't recognize to our API server at this address. Now, for this to work, we also have to make our requests without explicitly declaring the port number in the request URL because now it's up here. So now we should just change it to forward slash API forward slash workouts without the local host port 4000 bit. And now since React wouldn't recognize this resource internally as a static asset or a resource in the React application, it will proxy the request to localhost port 4000 and then forward slash API forward slash workouts. And as a byproduct, this actually also removes the cross origin request error that we get in the console. So this should fix the issue during development. However, importantly, this will only work during development and for production, you need to make sure that every request points to the correct endpoint. Now, before you preview this, for this to work, you need to open up your terminal, come to where the React server is running and we need to cancel out of this process because we've changed the package.json file and then we can just run the same script again just to catch that change and then we should be able to preview this in a browser. All right, so now we can see that workout title in the home page. Now, we only have one document inside the collection at the minute, which is why we're only seeing one title there. But if we had more, we would see more titles. And as we go on, we will add more as well. But now, at least, we know this is working. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is, instead of just outputting the title here for each workout, I'd like to create a component which outputs a bit more template for each workout. So the title, but also the number of reps, and also the date, and also the load, etc. So to do that, we'll create a new component over here inside the components folder, and we'll call this workout details like so. Js. And then we're going to import that into the home component. So let me do a little comment right here saying components and we want to import and it's going to be workout details and we need to say it's from dot dot forward slash to come out of the home or rather the pages folder then into the components folder. 
forward slash and we want workout details. Okay, so now down here, we can output the workout details component for each workout. We also need a key prop on this and that's gonna be the workout underscore ID. And we also want to pass in as a prop the actual workout. So we'll do that as well. Workout is equal to the whole workout object. So now we have access to that on the props inside this component. So now let's go to workout details and create this component. So const workout details is equal to a function. And then also we can destructure from the props, the props that we pass through the workout. Okay, so now inside here, we just need to return a template. And what I'll do is return a div, first of all, with a class of workout-details. And then inside that, we'll do an h4 for the title. So we'll output the workout.title. And then after the h4, we'll do a paragraph tag and also a strong tag right here. And this is gonna be for the load. So we'll say the load in kilograms like so, then a colon and a space, and then after the strong tag, we can output the workout load. So workout.load, and then we'll do something similar down here. So I'll copy that, but instead of load, it's gonna be reps, and right here, this is reps as well. And then also when it was created, we'll do it in a paragraph tag. So we'll output workout.created at, remember that was the automatic timestamp that MongoDB added for us on Mongoose. Okay, so now we need to export this, export default workout details like so. All right, so now that should all work. We'll try this out in a browser. Okay then, so looks like it's all working. Situps is the title, there's the load, there's the reps, and here is the created at date. Looking terrible at the minute. We're gonna format that towards the end of the whole project, but for now, I just wanna add a little bit of CSS to make this look a bit better. Okay, so over to our index.css file, and then down here, I'm gonna paste in a lot of styles, again, from my repo, woohoo! So you can get that from the link down below, remember? So we have the home class, and we say display as grid, and we give this a grid template columns property of three fractions on the left, one fraction on the right. So we've done this so that the actual workouts sit on the left, all the workout details, and then on the right later, we're gonna have a form to add new workout. So that's gonna be on the right side, but the left side is three times the size as the right size. And the grid gap is 100 pixels. Okay, so the workout details div, we say give a background of white, border radius four pixels, margin of 20 pixels, top and bottom, auto left and right, padding of 20 pixels, position is relative, and a box shadow as well, just to give it some depth. So remember, that's each one of the workouts. So inside home, for each one of the workouts, we output the workout details component, and that's this div right here that we're styling, okay? So we're making it look a bit like a card. And then we have the H4 inside that, margin zero, zero, 10 pixels on the bottom, and then zero left, font size 1.2 Ms. The color of this is the primary variable, which is this color right here. Let's go back down. Workout details P, uh, the margin zero, font size 0.9 Ms, color is gray. And then finally, we have a workout detail span. And you know what, we've not added that in yet, but later this is gonna be for a delete button. So we're just positioning that absolutely. Top 20 pixels, right 20 pixels, cursor pointer, background of a kind of like a gray color, bit of padding, border radius, and a color of dark gray. So like I said, this is gonna be for a delete button later on, doesn't really do anything just yet, but it's there nonetheless. Okay, so let's save that and preview again. So there we go, my friends, locking loads better already. And like I said before, we only have one because there's only one document in the database at the minute, but we will be adding more as we go along. And then we'll just have one of these cards for each one in the database. So there could be five or six or more later on. Next up, I wanna create a form over here to add new workouts.